Hey everybody, so today what we actually do have here is uh, we're going to be explaining some uh, a little bit of an issue that we did see while we were installing Windows on a laptop for uh, not really the first time. This is for a customer that actually went to a retail store, bought a brand new laptop, wanted us to pretty much just wipe the exact laptop itself. This is really good if you're doing it to eliminate some uh, manufactured bloatware that they do put on. This is a good way to do it because sometimes what the manufacturer will do is they'll put some bloatware some stuff that you would get a trial of and then you have to purchase a subscription and it's just sometimes it's kind of annoying and, and it will actually post ads some and s sometimes it will pop up notifications that you need to buy the software the subscriptions running out so it's a good way just to kind of eliminate that just to wipe it clean good thing to always do if you do have an actual laptop that you bought from the store just wipe it right away install a clean version of windows and uh, you'll make sure that you don't have any bloatware or at least minimize the bloatware that you can because we do know that it is, it's Windows so it does come with some bloatware but at least it's, it knocks the manufacturer's bloatware out of it. So especially for laptops, this isn't the greatest thing to do all the time because you get the official drivers pre-installed for you. You don't have to go to the manufacturer's website. Everything's just working right out of the box. So if, if you're more of an advanced user and you want to get the latest drivers, um, I would recommend going with a clean install. If you just want to go with a simple install and you don't really care, then you can again just <laughs> Pointless, this video will be kind of pointless for you. But it's a good educational thing to see if you're trying to wipe Windows, especially for if you're trying to get ready for Windows 11. Uh, it's going to require all the TPM requirements. You want to make sure that your um, security is up to date and make sure that you turn on all the security settings before you install Windows for the first time so you don't have to reinstall Windows ag potentially again when you have Windows 11. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you do get a bootable a Windows device. You can usually use the USB. We do actually have a video on how to make this USB um, a bootable one and you can go ahead and check that out. So you want to go into the BIOS setup there and uh, it's very uh, it's different on each model. This one you can on HP's you can hit escape and then you can hit to the boot menu which will be F9. It's going to load the USB and that we want to boot from so it's basically telling the computer to boot from the USB. It will load and you'll get to the point where it shows up the Windows screen. So you'll see that the laptop is booting from the USB. You'll see Windows there. There are some models, and in case this one, that the actual driver for the touchscreen, the driver for the, the mouse, isn't actually pre-installed at this point, and we need to plug in actual a USB mouse driver just to at least click our way to, to get to Windows. Don't be alarmed. This is actually a, this is pretty typical, especially on newer machines where it just doesn't have the drivers pre-installed. As we've seen this on the Surface laptops, and we've seen them especially on the, the HPs, and they need to have the driver installed um, before you're able to actually load up a mouse, or you can just plug one in. It'll install the driver right then and there because usually mice are just plug and play. But for the touchscreen, it's not going to work, and you'll see a lot of other drivers just aren't going to work throughout this whole process. But that's the whole point of this video: is once you hit next after you plug in your USB mouse. There is no storage devices found, and you need to select a load a storage device from a driver that you had to pre-install. Now, this is something that's a bit over the top, especially for a laptop. Most laptops just kind of avoid this, but any of the newer ones, uh, especially in this case, it's a newer, it's 11th gen Intel. So what do you need to do, and how are you going to install it, and why is there no actual storage device found. I have a hard drive, right? I just bought a laptop, so why am I not having a hard drive? So these hard drives that you usually do see that have this type of problem, it's going to be something called a RAID, and it usually has uh, an SSD that has um, this cache drive. It's called an Intel Optane drive. It does help the speed of the, of the SSD, but not as much as it would for like a mechanical drive. But a lot of manufacturers have been putting this in. Some manufacturers actually put the Optane on the actual SSD itself or some Windows actually needs a driver to see this. So what you want to do is you want to go to HP's actual website. You can Google it or just go to the HP support page and you want to go to the laptop section. If this is a laptop, of course, most of the time this is going to be a laptop. So you want to search your exact laptop. So you can search it by your serial number. And once you get that up, you'll actually see that there are a bunch of drivers here to install. And from here, what you want to do is you want to make sure you go down to uh, the storage devices. You want to find the RAID RST driver. It's the rapid storage uh, device driver that you actually do want to find, and you want to download it. You want to, you can actually run the program from wherever you did download it. And now you want to actually extract it. You're going to want to extract it to the USB. I do recommend if you do already have the Windows bootable, you can actually just make a folder and create it with a whatever the name it is or just whatever name that you're going to remember that's going to be loaded on there. And you just you can extract it all to the USB. Because if you extract it to your computer, 
you're not going to be able to load the driver on the USB itself and it won't actually install until you uh, extract it on the USB. So you want to make sure that everything's saved on that USB and you rem remember the folder name. And once you do that, then we can go back in and we can actually go plug in the, the USB again. And when you actually hit load driver, you want to hit you can't just hit the normal folder that it's under. You want to hit this one very specific. It's, it's called the F6 folder. And you'll see that. And once you double click that, you'll actually pop up with a prompt. And it'll have two other drivers. And it'll have two, two actual selections that you can install. And the driver you want to install is called the Intel RST VMD controller. And it'll be the top one. And once you hit next, it, you'll see that it will actually install the actual driver itself. And now it goes right to the point where you actually see the, the drives that are installed. For something like this, if you're doing a clean install, you can just select all of them, delete all of them, and then install Windows from there. So I hope that kind of solved a little bit of problems or a little bit of confusions. You actually might see something like this um, based on an older, if you ever had Windows 7 install, you might see that based on there. That's usually because if you're using a USB 3.0 and it's going to be giving you trouble in a USB 2.0 slot, sometimes it can't recognize the drivers and how to extract the data. Those are possible solutions for older drives ever, if you ever don't see anything like that. It won't even let you pass the main page to even install Windows in the first place. It won't even do that for you. And it's very specific uh, to the 11th gen Intel and higher. Uh, but again, if you're trying to install anything that's that's newer, this is definitely the way to go to do a clean boot and make sure you're all, your TPM settings are ready for Windows 11. Or if you just want to get rid of all the bloatware that's based on Windows for, for installing for any type of manufacturer that you've bought it from. Either HP, Dell, or any of those, they have their own bloatware. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. found this very, very informative. Uh, please leave a like if you have. Uh, please subscribe for more content. We're actually almost at 5,000. So let's keep it up and let's do more. It will be nice to do a lot more repairs. We do lots of liquid spills. We do lots of data recoveries. We also do lots of just Windows installations or anything that we do see, especially as a tech shop. So stay tuned for anything like that. You guys have been great. So check out our store. We, we have everything linked in the description below. So go ahead and check it out. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed.